Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing about the torsional vibrations of a two rotor system. So two rotor system means a shaft which is held in bearings will be carrying two rotors at each of its ends. So here you can see the two rotors, let us name this one as the rotor A and this is rotor B. So if you are observing, torsional vibrations will occur only when the rotors A and B are rotating or moving in the opposite direction. See. If rotor A is rotating in this direction and B is also rotating in this direction, then no torsional vibrations will be producing. The torsional vibrations will be produced only if these rotors are moving in the or uh, twisting and untwisting in the opposite direction. That is one of the necessary conditions for uh, producing this torsional vibrations of this two rotor system. And for this two rotor system, we have to find the natural frequency of this torsional vibrations. And for that, uh, we'll be defining something called node. So first, we'll be seeing the concept of node and that will be discussed with respect to a single rotor system first. Then we'll be moving on to the two rotor system analysis. So we have seen the single rotor system. That means shaft carrying a single rotor or disc, one of its ends and the other end being fixed. The torsional vibrations will produce when this uh, disc is twisted and untwisted. So uh, whenever we are twisting this, the shaft will be getting twisted and the point, if you are considering some point A at its end, then this will be moving to A dash so that there is a twist is happening and that angle you can measure. So this angle, you can call it as the angle that is happening here is theta. So this theta and this angle, something you can call it as gamma. This theta and gamma are entirely different for this torsional vibrations. We are measuring the angular displacement in linear vibrations of spring mass system there you are measuring the linear displacement x of the mass so here you will be measuring the angular displacement theta of the rotor or disc and you will be expressing or you will be finding the solution of theta as a function of time so here if you are observing this theta is uh, varying from its fixed end to free end and maximum theta is observing at the free end where the rotor is attached and if you are uh, seeing at the solution of theta in terms of the time will be in form of theta equal to some amplitude into sine omega t. And this theta will be maximum or theta that we are calculating for the rotor. So A is representing the maximum amplitude. So you can represent this uh, angular deflection theta of the rotor which is varying from the fixed end to free end as uh, shown in this figure. So here the maximum amplitude will be acting at the position of the rotor. So you can call this amplitude as something A. So if you are observing at the fixed end, actually there is no uh, angular deflection is occurring. That means the value of theta is zero. And this point is actually known as node. So this node means some section within the shaft where the effect of torsional vibrations is zero. That is, that means the shaft is unaffected by this torsional vibration at the point node. So this point node we can uh, use for the analysis for the two rotor system and this is important where we will be splitting a two rotor system into two single rotor system with respect to the position of the node. So this is the concept of node. Node is simply a point or section within the shaft where the effect of torsional vibrations is zero. So let's move on to the analysis of Two rotor system. So for the two rotor system already we have uh, learned that the torsional vibrations will occur only when the rotors A, this B rotor A and this B rotor B whenever they are rotating in the opposite direction. Suppose here I am giving some twisting for the rotor A in the clockwise direction and some twisting for the B in the anti-clockwise direction. Then here the shaft will be twisting according to this uh, given motion. So some part of the shaft will be getting twisted in this clockwise direction according to the uh, rotor A and some part will be moving in the opposite direction with respect to or according to the rotor B. So there will be some section within the shaft where this deflection is being changed from the clockwise direction to anti-clockwise direction or there will be some point or section within the shaft where the torsional vibration effect is zero. That means the displacement or the value theta variable is zero. And that point we already called it as naught. So there will be some section and this point you can call it as a naught. So in the earlier uh, case for a single rotor system, naught was observed at the 
fixed length so here knot is coming somewhere in between the position of shaft so using this knot uh, you can split this system into two single rotor system and that we'll be seeing now so here you can see uh, the for the rotor this is rotor a and this is rotor b there will be some amplitude for the uh, variable theta variable for the rotor a and that you can call it as a a and this one you can call it as a b that means the amplitude of these two rotors a and b and with respect to the node you can define the position of node from two rotors this can be written as la and this can be written as lb if the total length of the shaft is l then l can be written as la plus lb so by doing the analysis of this two rotor system we will be finding the position of the node from either a that means the distance la or from the other rotor b that is the distance b you can evaluate and also you will be evaluating the natural frequency of this torsional vibrations of this two rotor system so now uh, we are having some point node within the shaft where the effect of torsional vibration is zero and this based on this node position you can split this single rotor system into two separate shaft which are vibrating with their respective rotors and both of these vibrations will be having the same natural frequency. So from the previous figure node is coming here and this position can be referred with respect to this distances LA and LB where this is rotor A and this is rotor B. The amplitude of this theta variable will be this is AA and this is AB. Suppose so this is the same rotor A and this another rotor B where I am splitting the shaft with respect to the node into form two single rotor system. So this single rotor system will be having a length of LA and this will be having a length of LB. Suppose the mass moment of inertia of the rotor AB capital IA and this B capital IB. So this two single rotor system will be having the frequency as discussed in the previous lectures where omega natural frequency of this rotor A or the shaft carrying rotor A is equal to square root of Q divided by I. So I can call this as the Q of torsional stiffness of first part divided by the mass moment of inertia of the first rotor. And similarly the natural frequency of the second um, single rotor system that means with respect to the rotor b omega n b can be written as square root of q b torsional stiffness of second b divided by the mass moment of inertia of the rotor i b so this two frequencies should be uh, equal so i can write omega n a is equal to omega n b then square root and square root will be getting uh, cancelled and you can write the QA divided by IA that is torsional stiffness to mass moment of inertia ratio will be same on both sides. So if you are seeing this torsional stiffness we have defined it as Q is actually GJ divided by L. So where G, J and L are measured for the shaft material. So for QA it should be GJ divided by LA and QB should be GJ divided by LB. If or it is based on the assumption that the shaft is continuously same uh, made up of same material and same cross section size that means diameter is same and also material is same so that both capital G the rigidity modulus and the J polar moment of inertia of the shaft for this two rotor system are same then the only variable will be L that means LA and LB are different so I can write the G J divided by LAIA is equal to GJ divided by LBIB. So where I is the mass moment of inertia. So from this equation I can write this LAIA is equal to LBIB or you can write the relation LA divided by LIB divided by IA. IA divided by IB. That means based on this relation you can find the position of the node which is coming within the shaft based on this values of la and lb where the sum of la and lb is equal to l that is the total length of the shaft so you can solve for these two variables that means la and lb are the unknown to find the position of node so you can solve these two equations and you can find the position of the node and the natural frequency can be evaluated either using this equation omega n equal to square root of qa by ia or with respect to the other part that means this equation 
So this is somewhat the analysis of two rotor system to find the natural frequency of this torsional vibrations of this two rotor system and also to find the location of the node. So here we are having the important relation between the node position LA, LB with respect to IA, IB that is the mass moment of inertia and also you can find another relation between the amplitude of vibrations of this rotors A and B. So here if you are observing this is AA, the amplitude of vibration of rotor A and this is LA. So this should be proportional. That means if you are finding the ratio of amplitudes of vibration, then this AA divided by LA should be same as, that means this is LA, should be same as the amplitude of vibration of rotor B divided by LB. So this equation will also be required for sol solving some problems with respect to this uh, two rotor system. So that's all for this analysis. Hope you understood and thanks for watching. In the coming videos, we'll be solving problem from this uh, two rotor system.